Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at guide grids. Uh, more specifically, I looked at it in a previous video, looking at all the sheet composition tools, but more specifically, the grid guides, the guide grids. We want to actually start to align some views because that's kind of the whole point of what they're for. So if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. Okay, getting into it now. First of all, we want, we want to look at these on sheets. So... I've got a blank sheet, we're in a template, nothing special here, but I want to use this guide grid, and of course we need to make a new one, and so I'm just going to call it that, and this, this is the guide grid. So by default, it's at one inches. Uh, these grids are at one inches, so right there, one inch. And maybe we decide we want two or four, it doesn't matter. And so for the sake of this, we want to actually use these grids to uh, go ahead and align our views. So let's say we want to drag level one on here, and ultimately, you're not going to, these won't print. These aren't something you're going to use more than just to place things and locate views on a sheet. And then so level two we have right here. And let's go ahead and place that level two right here. So basically, we want to somehow align these views on these sheets because we want to be able to jump from one sheet to the next and be able to see that that location of the plan is the exact same as far as like actual full location like the exterior walls everything like that so we're basically we flip a page and the only thing that changes is you know things inside you know whatever um, any sort of uh, dimensional changes that way so how would we go about doing that well again there we go guide grids so where where does this work well i can apply this guide grid to any sheet and i can actually have it look and perform the same as it does here and with that we can simply move this where we want it to go and then match that location when it comes to the next level above. And this is going to be used mainly for plan views, whether that's a floor plans, RCPs, you name it. But regardless, you're, you're stacking up and you want to be consistent as far as where that location is on the sheet. So how would we do this? Well, I can get it close enough, but I can't get it perfect. And so if I wanted to apply this guide grid to my next sheet, I can come over to my other sheet and of course I can go to guide grid up here and then I can choose that existing guide grid. Perfect. Guide grid one. Yes. And there it is. It's populated in the exact same location. I don't have to do anything. Now, obviously if I move this, it's going to change, <laughs> of course. But if I come back to level one, we can see that it's like sheet one. It's actually changed here too. So just know that this is going to happen everywhere. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this, uh, mainly because I'm a big proponent of naming things correctly. And I will note, if you if you do delete it off of one sheet, you're actually deleting it everywhere. It's literally one instance, or like one, I don't know, type versus instance is always like kind of up in the air. But it's one instance that is basically visible wherever you choose, everywhere. It's there, whether it's turned on or not. That's the kind of the key. So I don't have any made. Let's go back to my level one view. And I want to zoom extents because we want to constantly see how the location has changed. So look, looking at level one versus level two, where they are on the sheet, obviously things are off. You know, we can see it right there. So let's go to level one, go to guide grid. I want to make sure I name this. You know, if this is going to be a six inch grid, call it a six inch grid. But for this case, I'm actually going to call it floor plans or just plans. You know, that, that's probably easier because that, this would apply to RCPs as well. So plans. And again, this is coming in at one inch. Not a problem there. I decided, you know, I want this a little bigger. But again, uh, what we're really trying to do is locate this plan. So do these grids really matter? Do the size really matter? No, it doesn't. So the thing that does matter is uh, we are going to basically choose one of these points and the less we have the easier it is to work with so i might even put this at like 12 inches you know something larger and you can start to see what we get here so this really large grid and so we need to decide uh, where in this view we want to orient to one of these vertex and again i can move this grid around it doesn't have to stay here kind of centered around my sheet it doesn't have to at all um but the main thing now is that we need something that's going to be able to align, snap, move from this view to this guide grid. And the only thing that will do that is grids. And so I don't have any grids in these level one plans, level one or two, uh, in this whole project. So let's go to level one. I'm going to just throw some grids in here. And they don't necessarily matter. But the thing I would like to say is that you'll find uh, 
more success doing this if you end up having some intersections. So we'll create some intersections here. And obviously I'm not gonna be precise in this because I know not only do I not need them in this project for what it is, but um, obviously I didn't have them. So let's just go ahead and make this, these grids like 20 feet apart here. And I'm gonna come back the other direction and of course do the exact same thing going this way. Make a grid there. And I want this to be a, maybe I want this to be a, yeah, that's perfect. And then copy this up. Okay, so look at this. We, we've got our grids here. This is working just fine. And, you know, here's our intersection of A1. Here's E5. You know, great. This is perfect. This is basically good enough. And so if I come back to my level one view, I can see, hey, all right, this is starting to make a little more sense. So then it's a matter of which of these grid intersections do we want to align to one of these guide grid intersections? Because we can start to use those on each of the sheets because this guide grid is going to be in the same location and not only that so is the location of this actual grid like on the view itself the intersection of these two grids is going to stay the same or at least you would think it would the point is that it should so that's a good thing to align to so what can i do well let's go ahead and move this off and i let's go ahead and use this like a5 here the bottom right hand corner and so we need to get some sort of a a grid down here at the bottom right of my sheet and I can move this as much as I want and maybe that's a good location right there so ideally this location right there is where I would want this a5 grid intersection to end up well how do I do that well I can simply move literally move the view and if I move the view I can't really snap to anything in the view at all except grids which is really interesting that you can do that but you can so you can see I can actually snap to these grids which is awesome but I can also snap to the intersection and I get that boldened X that for intersection right there so I can move this wherever I want and it's, it's great because I can actually move this to the guy grid and when I click I actually get this weird error and it says selection cannot be copied and I don't, <laughs> beats me as to why and it looks like it's actually looking at that view title which is interesting I'm not sure, exactly sure why but there is a workaround around this because I was confused the first time I saw that if I go to move this um, I, all I need to do is uncheck the disjoin I'm not sure what that has to do with anything it thinks we're copying we're not copying we're moving and of course it's on a sheet it's just the whole it's the whole view but there's something between the disconnect between the view and the view title and all of this not sure exactly why so with that said i can uncheck the disjoin i can choose my intersection again and then move that to my guide grid intersection and look at that that's awesome okay that, that that's perfect and not only that i can just i can move this out of the way and so look at that this is looking great so if i zoom extends here of course we have this guide grid on and we'll get to turning that off in a second so whenever i zoom extends of course it's going to account for the guide grid but i don't i don't basically don't want this guide grid to go beyond the edge of my sheet so that whenever i do zoom the extents i'm seeing the whole sheet only and so i can just drag this in without affecting that those intersections because it's still based on where i've moved it and the fact that that intersection these intersections are set it's just a matter of how wide and how tall we see the grid beam and so with this i'm going to keep this within the sheet itself and of course i would probably want to extend it up here if i wanted to be a little more consistent and helpful to the rest of the views on the sheet but i don't care about those right now so now if i zoom extents i can see the whole sheet again and if i come back to my next level here i can zoom extents see it all but now i need to actually turn those grids on and where can i do that well i can always go back to view and then check right here guide grid and then add it there but with, if I don't do it that way, I on my actual sheet, I can scroll all the way down and under the other in the properties, there's guide grid, which is currently set to none, as we can see. But I can toggle this on to plans, and that's cool. And so there it goes. It pops up. And you can see we're slightly off. You know, we're, we're a little bit off of where we wanted to go. And so it doesn't necessarily matter where I put this because ultimately I'm going to move this and make sure disjoin is unchecked choose that intersection and then again move this to that location that intersection right there perfect and so now I'm gonna zoom extends here and then we can see if I go from level one to level two these are in the exact same location that's exactly the purpose of the guide grids um, obviously you can use this to just like place detail views within 
each one of these boxes so you can try and keep them a certain size or whatnot. That's fine. Uh, but the primary reason for the guide grids is that you can actually use it to align views such as this. So not only this, but I wanted to actually introduce you to doing this for plan, and not only plans, but sections and elevations, because that may come up. And so I'm going to go into my level one view. And again, this is going to use the, the grids, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and, and make not only a section, but also an elevation. So I'll make a section here. And you know, this is a good enough looking section location right there. I like that. We'll have all these grids to look at. And in a similar vein, I want to probably look at a an elevation. Of course, I need to turn elevations on because they are not necessarily on by default. There we go. So with that, let's go ahead and turn them on here. And I just want to look at this front face here. I want to make sure that my extents are probably just the width of this flat wall right here, this curtain wall. Perfect. So I can see these two grid lines. But in this section, I can see all of these grid lines. So OK. Cool. Let's now go to my, my sections and elevation sheet, drag this elevation on, and then I'll drag this section on. And so typically speaking, you know, these are fine, kind of wherever, you know, you want to put them. Um, but the thing I want to point out is that we can use the guide grid once again. We can turn the guide grid on here. And let's say we want to put uh, our grid line four at the edge of this line and this guide grid line. Well, simply like we just did before with the plans, I can make sure this joint is off, and I can just move this over. Boom. Move that over right there. And so it looks good. And not only that, but I can move this over to match the same way. Now, what I would need to do is expand the view to see 4, because, of course, I would want to match that with 3. And, you know, if I want to make this a little easier on myself, I could match 3. But because of where I placed this one, I might want to match it with 4 instead. So I can drag this over temporarily get out of the view, move this, again, move with the, the grid number four, over to this guide grid line, and there we go. We are aligned beautifully. And now, of course, I want to uh, move this back to where we only see what we need to see really right there. And there we go. We're aligned. Now, I will say, um, the way that sections and elevations and um, things like that work with having multiple views on these sheets is that they will automatically align to grids regardless of the presence of a guide grid. So we can turn this off, and you can see as I move this over, we'll start to get this aligned showing up right there. And what is this telling us? Well, this tells me that I'm aligned, and you can see clearly that I am with guide grid, uh, grid 3, and then even moving it over to 2 because of the same scale. That's really important, too. The same scale, they're both an eighth of an inch, so that's going to work just fine, too. So... That's going to work great if you wanted to align things that way. Now, uh, this gets kind of fishy. If you have things on different levels and whatever, whatever it might be, um, if you're trying to match it horizontally, of course, I get the same thing with levels working for me. So here's level two aligned nicely right there. Level two comes right across right there. And besides that, you could do the same with levels when it comes to grids and moving those to the guide grids. But uh, the point being is if you have some weird wonky levels and things like that, you can use the guide grids not just for plans but also for elevations and sections to start to align those up. And there might be times where you have uh, the same grid in a plan, but you it just so happens that the view itself is not actually perpendicular or they're they're both not the same angle so you're not going to get that alignment perfectly but then again if those grids are in the view you can use the guide grids and move them and align them just so so that will do it for this video what we did is look at guide grids you know that's great and now the last thing i want to cover of course is if we have all of these on this is one final thing if we have all these on you might say well i don't want to deal with all of these well the nice thing we can do is hold shift choose all of our sheets, go to guide grid, and then turn it off. That's simple, really simple. Now, these are the exact same. We have, we have them all in the same place, nothing moved. The guide grids are still there if you need to turn them on, but then we have everything nice and aligned where we want it to be. So again, that will do it for this video. I hope you learned something regarding the guide grids. Um, it's not the most useful thing. It's kind of jumping through more hoops to get things kind of nicely aligned. But at the end of the day, it's kind of all about presentation and making things a bit easier for yourself and the contractor to understand the project, how it's built, how it's stacked, how things align. And 
this is a perfect way of doing that on your sheet. So keep this in mind when you're trying to align some views. It's going to actually get you 100% accurate, whereas just eyeballing it isn't going to quite do that. So if you learned something, please, please demolish that like button. It tells me that you did and you, that you might have liked the video too. So I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very, very much for watching.